Okay, so managed to get a few things done. Um, it's actually real close to being uh, being able to pull this out right now. Um, the one holdup I have is back here. There's this boot that connects the drive that covers the U joint for the uh, drive shaft. In order to get that out, there's a C clip there, and I don't have the proper C clip pullers for that. Um, I think I've got pretty much everything else unbolted or um, removed. I was uh, going to bring you along and kind of document some of this stuff as I was going along, but you know what? Uh, I came out here, I got things organized, and started uh, making room so I can move around in here, and next thing I know I'm just going full force on it. And after the last video, my back went out. And I just really haven't had a chance to uh, work on it till now. Uh, um, I did have this out yesterday. It was uh, Saturday. Um, it was like 57 degrees outside or something, but um, there was no breeze and it was sunny and so it felt more like 70. So uh, didn't go far, you know, just up and down the road, around the block and such, but... Uh, it's working, it's working really good. So no, I just got to get the motor from here into there, clean this up, and uh, I'll be happy. Um, uh, these I'm going to sell. These are the ones that came on this bike. Uh, the one from Michigan. The one from Milwaukee um, had those saddlebags right there. So those are the ones I'm going to put on this bike because I don't care much for these triangle ones, as I mentioned before. Um... But I think uh, I think we're, it's moving along nicely. I mean, it took me most of the day. I'm not gonna lie; it, it took me a lot of time to do this, but um, to get where just where I'm at. Uh, and most of that is because I took my time documenting things, and so I know where they went and putting bolts back so that and nuts back so that I didn't lose them or forget where they went or you know the usual stuff. So I also had to take the brakes completely off. I couldn't move this thing. I had to put it on the center stand and I couldn't move it. And, um, it was cause the brakes were locked, not only on the front, but in the rear. So I just took them off and it took, where'd it go? Ah, this screwdriver here, this big screwdriver prying on them to get them off of the off of the discs, but the, off the rotors, they came off though, so. Uh, you can see my jack stand is holding up the motor. Um, it's not in any danger of falling, um, but it, I, it it did, when I took the long bolts out that hold it, it dropped, and I need it to stay up until I get the drive shaft off, and there's a bolt on this side and a bolt on that side that have to come off, and um, they're not going to come off if all the weight's sitting on them. Uh, I also have to pull this shroud off, but these bolts are just loose. I just got to, I'm going to leave that on there until uh, I'm ready to actually pull the motor. And then there's a, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a subframe that goes from the back of the motor to just about here uh, on the front of the motor here. Uh, this comes off. These are just loose as well. Uh, this frame comes off, and then you pull the whole motor off the left side of the bike. Uh, it's about a 200-pound motor, so it's not going to be easy. I'm going to have to get a couple buddies over, uh, bribe them with some beer, and then have them pull this out. But I'm not going to do that until I also have that one loose. And then um, that way I can pull this out, get some help pulling this one out, and then get some help, you know, have them help me get this one out. But I'm not going to swap them right away because on that one I'm going to put in a new clutch and a new stator just because they're out and it's a lot easier to do when the motor's out. In fact, the stator you can't do unless the motor's out. So um, the clutch you can do with the motor in, but yeah, it's just a little easier. Um, and then with this one, uh, I'm also uh, going to take the carbs off of that one, uh, the Michigan bike, and clean them up and put them on the... Oh, excuse me, on the Milwaukee bike. Um, so that's going to take some time. Um, but otherwise, I think we're in good shape. Uh, this one won't take nearly as long to pull, mostly because a lot of the work's already done. Um, the gas tank's out, the you know, everything. The air box is just sitting there. So, I mean, 
there's just fewer bolts on this one and uh, wires and such that I have to worry about as compared to that one. I also have to fix the rear brakes on that one. The master cylinder on it is kind of shot, so I'm just going to take it off of this one and use it over there. Uh, also, while I'm waiting, I'm going to have to get a new front tire. The rear tire is in okay shape, so I'm going to leave that for now. I might replace it over the winter, next winter. Uh, I also want to repaint the, uh, the fender, the side covers, the, the faux tank. It's over there in the bench. And possibly uh, the fairing, and probably the fairing and the side covers that go down from the fairing. They kind of go around the motor. Um... I say that because I'm still not 100% sure I'm putting that fairing back on. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm going to drive it for, ride it for a while without the fairing and see how that goes. I got the headlight and everything from that one. From the Milwaukee bike, is going to go on the uh, Michigan bike. And then um, this is the one I'm going to title and ride. So, uh, <clears throat> But it doesn't take long uh, to swap them out. So... Uh, I might just go ahead and do that. Now, if I take this off and find out the guy's done a hack job on the wiring, I'll just put the fairing back on because it wouldn't be worth rewiring. It's just, it just wouldn't be worth it. Um, but I did, I don't know if you noticed, I picked up this workbench and that workbench from Harbor Freight for about the same, they were both on sale and I got them for about the same price as it would cost me to make one workbench. And the advantage to this is this one's steel mostly, and um, that one has uh, is for woodworking. However, that one's not nearly as wide as I would like it. So I've got some plywood over there, some three quarter inch marine grade. Uh, I'm gonna cut it to the length of that one and set it on top. That'll give me the width I'm looking for and protect the top. And then I'll put some cleats on it so it doesn't move around. <clears throat> but that'll give me the extra workspace I need. Um, but still give me a woodworking bench for those times where a woodworking bench makes sense. Um, so I got my router under there and a few other things. Um, all stuff that I would use um, whenever I do woodworking. And yes, I bought a Harbor Freight vise because the vise I had, uh, I had left at the other house because frankly, I just, it was old and very small and it just didn't have what I needed uh, this one at least has a has a jaws for a pipe down here and it's big it's sturdy um, it'll do the trick you know I don't make my living using these tools they're just tools I use every once in a while so it just didn't make sense for me to spend gobs of money on a brand name vice for the few times I'm gonna use it so Harbor Freight, it was on sale. So, like everything I buy from Harbor Freight. Um, these lights, were those these lights here, um, also from Harbor Freight. I got two of them, one there, one there. And then I got these, this one and this one, from um, Walmart for the same price. Uh, the Harbor Freight ones claim that they're brighter. And it's hard for me to tell. They might be a skosh brighter, but... Eh, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, so we'll we'll let you know later on how the benches did, but I I think they'll be all right. Um, they'll work anyway in the meantime. And then uh, I've got a guy coming for the stove and for that fridge. Get those out of here, and that'll free up a lot more room in here. And might actually um, we got a shed that we're gonna well probably in another four weeks. Um, we'll have delivered and set up behind the garage. And so a lot of the stuff like the tiller and this walk behind snow thrower and, um, you know, that whole, that whole rack right there is all going to go in the shed. So that'll free up some, even more room. And like that table there is actually a patio table. So once I'm confident the snow isn't coming back, um, probably in two or three weeks, uh, that'll go out on the patio and that'll free up that space. So I've got quite a bit of space to, that's going to get freed up here. I just, you know, it's been a long time coming. And then since the last video, my back went out. And you guys who have back problems, you know what that means. And so I was pretty much down until this week. So, which kind of bites because I took four days, um, I took a four day weekend in order to 
um, I was my plan was to come to work on these two bikes straight through that whole four days. I mean, you know, going inside only to hit, eat or whatever. But um, nope, my back went out. I didn't get to do anything but sit and lay in bed for four days. So it was kind of a waste of time off. But these things happen. All right, well, that's it for now. I just kind of wanted to give everybody an update. Let you know, yeah, things are moving. Um, this would go a lot faster if uh, if uh, my buddy were here to help me, um, Jeff. Um, the problem with that is um, he recently went through some heart surgery, so he's uh, recuperating at home. If he knew I was doing this on my own, he'd be here. And I don't want him to be, I want him to be resting and taking it easy. So, um, you know, hopefully he'll, he'll, uh, <laughs> hopefully this is a video he'll miss. Oh, it looks like I'm going to have to paint this rear fender too. I thought this was chrome. No. So anyway, I got some repainting to do. So that'd be the next thing. Oh, and for anybody who looked at, watched my unboxing video of this air compressor, all I can tell you is, if you have a garage that isn't heated, do not buy this air compressor. 